We interrupt our regularly scheduled nonsense to tell you about this episode's sponsor, Knack. Knack bags are a unique combination of laptop bags and backpacks. They are expandable when you need the extra space, endlessly adaptable for any situation, and fully padded to protect your most precious electronics. That's right. Coupled with a stylish modern design, Knack bags are the perfect companion for 9 to 5 commuting, jet-setting adventure, and everything in between. Shuffle off to knackbags.com to get yours today. For a limited time only, use offer code BEYOND to check out to get a free TSA-approved bag lock with your purchase. Yes, that's offer code BEYOND to get your lock with purchase of your knack bag of choice. This is Beyond the Bench with Nick Morgison and Nick Federa. A look at sports and pop culture from beyond common sense. The show that constantly goes off the rails and might never get back on. When you don't belong, you're a bench warmer. On this show, there's no riding the bench. This is Beyond the Bench on the Empty the Bench Podcast Network. Welcome, everybody, to episode 29 of Beyond the Bench on the Empty the Bench Podcast Network. For Nick Federa, I'm Nick Morgison. Boy, we have a lot to get to, but before we get there, let's make sure we share where we are on social media. At Beyond the Bench 1 on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Beyond the Bench 1. On Instagram, Instagram.com slash Beyond the Bench 1. And follow us on the Empty the Bench Podcast Network at ETB Network, presented by Knack Bags, which for some reason I don't have my bag around me right now. But if you're looking for a great quality bag, and Nick seems to keep putting cookies and candy. This and- was M&M's. Oh, M&M's. And they seem to not uh, crash or crush, do they? They did not crash or crush. Neither did the tw- the 20 N95s I keep in there as, as a backup. So if you want a great Knack Bag, knackbag.com. And make sure you put in the code BEYOND, B-E-Y-O-N-D, and you'll get a free TSA approved lock, $15 value, as I said, for free. As uh, Put it in your cart and make sure you get it with uh, your choice of a knack bag. All it's right. a knack bag. And what kind of life is it? It's the a one bag, bag life. life. Exactly. Uh, so, Nick, how was your week so far? So, it was, a little, it was a little bit hectic this past weekend. Thank you for filling me filling in for me on Beyond the Empty the Bench. But, um, I'm back, and um, I feel. Hmm, how shall I put this? <laughs> I feel. I'll tell you how you feel. Contented. R e l a x. He's right this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a lot to get to. Uh, a lot of interesting topics. We're not going to give you Hollywood bullshit this week for a change, really. No, it's bullshit from other places, but still, it doesn't really matter where it comes from. Not really, but here's what we're going to break down this week. Apple ends an iconic product, which is going to make us feel old. We'll get to that. Wendy Williams apparently has $2 to her name. I'm not really surprised, but when you hear the actual story, you'll understand. Uh, Stephen Curry's mom apparently was going to abort Steph. Uh, uh, This story just came out. Don't know why. That's a whole interesting thing. Jesse Williams apparently had a nude video get leaked. Um, and apparently it wasn't in his own house. Uh, yeah. Let's see. What else? Elon Musk. If, and we're going to get Nick pissed off today. But according to Elon Musk, quote, I'll reverse Trump's Twitter ban. Now, I'm on the same page with you on this one. We'll get to that one later. And a certain name in the food society is reappearing after all these years after being acquitted for a sexual misconduct trial we haven't heard this name in a very long time we'll get to that as well and a couple more here a soccer star got demoted from a club for ripping ass not literally but figuratively well no literally actually (laughs) um and also james cromwell Likes gluing himself to uh, counters. You wouldn't believe where. <laughs> yeah, figuratively. Like Buzzfeed article now. But so, all right, so here we go. go. Away we go, and we're going to start with Apple ends production of its iconic iP- iPod. Now, now Nick, 
Well, you so, and I are going to feel old. So, I, the iPod was first introduced in 2001. So, I was in fifth grade when that, when that, um, actually, was I? Yeah, I was in fifth grade when they first came out. It wasn't until middle school that it really started to, to, um, catch on. But you remember, the first generation iPods also had the buttons all in a row. The click wheel didn't do, all it did was help you navigate. Well, you could spin it, like, figuratively, yeah, right? And I remember thinking, I remember seeing, more and more increasing numbers of my friends and people I knew in middle school that had one. And I'm thinking to myself, eh, what do I need that for? We have CDs. No, but you know what, but you know, what's funny about the iPod. That's when the nano became the, that uh, is when, the, and that's precisely when I jumped onto the ship. I got an iPod. Now. In fact, I still have mine and which, it still works by the way. But what's so crazy. It says the company first introduced the iPod in 2001. Like you said, uh, boasting about the device's 1,000 CD quality songs capacity. Now, pe people were not giving up the CDs easily. They were walking around with Walkman still and CD God, players. I feel old saying Walkman, oi, um, which I did have. Never, I never actually had a Walkman, but, believe it or not. But then you had this device, which, you, wow, you could store songs on one single device. So you don't have to carry anything around. I oh, my need, God. I don't need all my A-Track tapes. Or I don't need all my listen to Disco Duck. <laughs> or I don't need all I don't need to carry all my CDs around in cases uh, that oh, they could then, break. Then, then we get then we get to the heyday of LimeWire and Kazaa and, and songs by Weird Al Yankovic that weren't actually by Weird Al Yankovic <laughs> <laughs> and, and mislabeled songs that did Jimi Hendrix spelled with a G a J I M M Y. <laughs> those were the days, folks. But then you it's don't know how good you have it. Oh, God, kids of today's generation, and this is about to be a rendition of You Kids Get Off My Lawn segment here. Yeah, we're, we're old men, we know. Uh, my bones are half dust anyway. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we're not old. I mean, I'm 29, you're 31. 31. I mean, we're not old, old, but we know of this we're technology. Ancient by, we're ancient by technology standards. But kids and don't the, realize. Zoomers, zoomers, zoomers are looking at us like, eh, what's that old man doing there? I mean... At a certain point, I already don't give a fuck what I say. So, <laughs> I mean, right. how how different how different am I from 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 a sixty year old man? Anyway, I've always had the music taste of somebody in his mid sixties. Right. So. I, I mean, I grew up on my dad's music: Beatles, Beach Boys, all that stuff. When Andrew, I was young. Zeppelin, Andrew. Black yeah. Sabbath. Right. I mean, but still, I mean, the iPod. I think the iPod Touch was the last one that was still on the market. Right. Well, it says Apple introduced the most recent iPod Touch model in 2019. So they're not pulling them off the market immediately, so you can still get one while supplies last. It's which scalpy, scalpy. I was about to say this is going to be one of those items where they're going to end up on eBay because you people are going to see them on eBay for about fifteen hundred, two thousand, even two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Right, you're gonna say because people are gonna be like, "Oh my god, it's a piece of nostalgia." It's the last one ever made. It's like, shit. I have three of them in my house, and two of them, two of them still work. I mean, the funny part is now that you can listen to music like on an Alexa device, or you can listen on a phone, or you can have a Sirius XM subscription. That really me in the lurch though, because I don't have an Apple phone. So I have to. So I intend on keeping my keeping my iPod and, and using it when I'm out out places because I don't want to. I don't want to. You know. Uh. You know. My my phone doesn't have that much memory enough as it is. So what, what the hell phone else do you have? Do? What phone do you have? Uh, Android. Oh, you're one of those. <laughs> what the hell is that supposed to mean? I'm kidding. Give me a break. <laughs> Also, uh, if we're if we're talking about the subject of old man rants, I might as well I might as well lead with this one. iPods were better when they had buttons. Yes, agreed. They were be of course they were of course they were big, of course they were bulky, but you know what? It felt substantial when they had buttons. But you know it what's felt funny? better in your hands when they had buttons. You know what's funny though now? The iPod is kind of as big as a phone. 
That's why they probably had to stop because the phone now stores the music in it. So who cares? Yeah, you don't. Need it does exactly what the iPod, what the iPod's supposed to do. So why even have the iPod? And you could also put the Spotify or the Pandora app on your phone and listen to music. That's what people do now. Like you remember, like back in the day, people would put the iPod on that thing on their arm when they would go running. Now still people do. still do. No, they, no but now phones. I was going to say people do it with their phone now. Yeah. And then you see people wearing spanks that really shouldn't be wearing spanks, and then they, then they run, and then they, they run like they got a load in their pants. <laughs> I mean, what, what was that? Or is that just me? What? <laughs> Maybe I'm the one who runs like I got a load in his pants. <laughs> I was going to say, and I do. <laughs> Wait, I was going to say though, what was it back in the day? It was called hot pants. Uh, yeah, hot pants. I mean, that's kind of inappropriate in today's standards. <laughs> But I don't know. The way I look at this is it needs things need buttons. That's my thesis. I, okay. But I was gonna say that I think it was kind of the iPod had its due. Like it's like that era ended. It did, but how much de credence do you actually give to the forced obsolescence theory? Hmm. I, the problem is to I'm inclined to believe it because Apple is just that kind of corporation. Yeah, but Apple's just going to come up with the next newest version of the but, iPod. But that, that's what forced obsolescence is. I know. And I don't know. I was not the biggest iPod guy. Like, I, heck, it took me forever to get to a smartphone. I was, I was like behind the technology until now I love like my iPhone. I take my iPhone everywhere, but I didn't get one till I was in high. I didn't get a smartphone till I was in college. Oh, yeah. Yay. Where are oh, you? Uh, Where are you with the times? Um, I'm. I think I'm somewhere around 1978. <laughs> Just you know, call me when I get to 1988. So, what do you think, Steve Jobs, if like rolling in his grave right now, is thinking with the iPod being off the market? Well, that's kind of a, that's kind of part of his legacy, isn't it? I mean, it's the biggest. It's one of the biggest successes he had while he was running. Well, when he came back the second time. It was that. The iPhone and the iPad. Yeah, those were his, those were the three pillars of his big success in turning turning Apple into the quasi evil corporation they are right now. Well, when they made the iPod, they kind of disrupted the music market. They did because you disrupted the physical music market, even though vinyl kind of had a rebound. <laughs> vinyl actually, vinyl actually had a resurgence because. You know, thank you, hipsters, for that. But uh, in terms of, yeah, in, in terms of just pissing people off that really shouldn't have been pissed off. I mean, I mean, I get it. And it's not like, and there, again, I don't want to be one of these people, but songs did, certain songs did sound better on vinyl there, than well, they did on digital. I could I could understand that, but there's a they just because they just weren't remastered. They weren't mastered for that format. There was a great movie that was done on Facebook called The Social Network, which mm -hmm. was uh, yeah, it was a good movie. It was David fin yeah David Fincher directed it. But I think what was his name? Eisenberg played uh, uh, yeah Jesse Eisenberg played Z uh, Zuckerberg. And you get it's not first of all you know that they totally overdo some of the truths in those movies. Well, yeah. But there was a great, I don't remember the scene exactly, but when they discovered Napster, the, the creator of Napster, and which was Justin Timberlake. Yeah, Sean Parker. And they're, they're basically deceiving the partner because the Napster guy knew that it was becoming obsolete. So he wanted in on Apple, and they basically played the guy for a fool, if you remember. So at a certain, at a certain point, it's like... I mean, all every single thing that is cutting edge right now is destined to be obsolete. Of course. Uh, it's just on a more accelerated timeline because, uh, again, whether forced obsolescence or not, technology is going to keep evolving at a pace that we can't keep up with. I don't remember the direct... And it, and it, does, and it does tend to alienate some people. I don't remember the direct quote. But I remember on Shark Tank, Kevin O'Leary talks about this all the time, that it's not always good to be first to innovation. 
because eventually there will be other competitors that will make a better mouse trap. If you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> like being first is fine, but unless you have something to um back it up, then someone's gonna knock you. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, again, it, it, at, at a certain point, what are you going to what are you going to do? Uh <sighs> God, I, I didn't mean to get all philosophical with this stuff, but it's maybe, maybe it's maybe it's just because I'm feeling older. Right, possibly, yeah. It could be, but and anyway, moving on. Yeah, all right. So let's uh, let's move on to someone who's old and decrepit themselves, Wendy Williams. Oh, come on, don't say that. Don't say that. She's decrepit. Disabled. There's a difference. No, I'm not making fun of... No, I'm saying she's decrepit means she she is no longer popular. It's not what that means. Kind of. But still. She, uh, did, did she say this in an Instagram post? That she only has $2 to her name? Um, That's what I thought I saw. No, she wrote... It, the story says Wendy Williams says she only has two dollars to her name, and people have to give her funds for uh, for bills. I have no money. Well, that's the tragedy of it because she's been suffering with health uh, issues for quite a while now, right? And again, bad business, bad business investments aside, you know, you the pe people took advantage of her for years and years and years. That's what that that's what that lawsuit was about, right? I think so. Yeah. So at a certain point, I, I mean, I do feel bad for her. I get it is, it is, you, you know what it is? It breaks my heart be, because I've seen this happen so many times with elder abuse and with abuse of disabled people. I mean, it's distressingly more common than you think, and it does, um, and it doesn't really care whether you're famous or not. In fact, it would you would think it would happen more to more and more to famous people because you know as they get older. Because as soon as you get money, everybody comes out of the woodwork with their hands out. Everybody always seems to want a piece of the pie. So that being the case, I mean, it doesn't make it. It doesn't make what she's struggling with, health wise and financial wise. It doesn't make it any less sad. It's just sad because we have because we have gotten to the point where she has to crowdfund in order to just you know live. Right. I mean, she's had many issues, like personal issues, outside issues. I. She got into it with uh, Wells Fargo, which froze her assets. Yeah, it, it, uh, again, getting screwed over by the bank is something that is something that it happens to a lot of people, famous people as well. Right. Um, sorry, I'm being distracted by. We have new interns that have started, so I'm trying to get them all situated. Um, but just looking at her situation, she got fired from her syndicated show because her struggles were just too much. She couldn't handle it. She really couldn't handle it, right? I mean, no, no. I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. We can't. I don't know. I mean, I, I like uh, Sherry Shepard, who took over. I think she's hilarious. We talked about this when it originally was announced. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. So at a certain point, yeah, I, I do have to feel bad for her. I do hope she gets back on her feet. That's what I can say. I mean, I never liked her. I thought she was, I don't know how to say it nicely, to be quite honest, but a douche. A douche. No, because she was she was the celebrity gossip. That's where she made her claim to fame. She doesn't care about people. Yeah, but most, most gossips don't. You really think Perez Hilton cared about people? Well, Paris during his day, I should say. Paris Hilton was a jerk. In every way, shape, or form, I feel like Wendy Williams at one point cared 
at one point. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Like Wendy Williams sold her soul to make a name for herself. I mean, she she originally was a comedian, right? What did you say? Uh, she was originally a comedian, right? Uh, yes, I think so. I mean, uh, I'm not really gonna see. I I I can't really. I'm not going to judge because, again, there but for the grace of God go any of us. Right. Um, I don't know. It's just a weird situation with her having $2 to her name. This is kind of karma for all the bad things she said about people. I, I wouldn't say it's karma. Why? You don't think so? No, I, I, I really don't. I really don't think it is. I really don't think it is because on, honestly, I think it deserved it, karma because karma implies that she kind of deserves what happened. She and does. That's She's case. a horrible person. And, but the one thing I'll give her, wait, the, I will defend her on one front. Okay. The guy that he, that she was with got another woman pregnant again, dick bag. So, so believe me, she's been through the ringer. So she has emotional issues, but at the same time, she treats people like shit. Still, I, but again, I you can I do have a, I do have sympathy. I do have sympathy. Maybe it's misplaced, but I do have sympathy. I guess I was never a fan. Uh, you and I are not fans of the whole celebrity gossip scene. No, unless it, unless it makes someone look incredibly stupid that we hate, then I could care less. Or unless uh, it's about farting. That well, we'll get to that later. We'll get, we'll get to that one, but uh, but yeah. So uh, what else? What else we got? Moving on. Well, speaking of uh, surprises, Stephen Curry's mom Sonia said she considered aborting her son Steph. So, oh. ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of you, in case you aren't one, you, in case you're wondering this question, I'm wondering it too. So I might as well just ask. What was the context for saying something like this? Well, the quote says that it's not a fairy tale out here, is the quote. Now, I, I'm reading to let me what read a little bit here. That? I mean, the, that she grew up in the that 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 what she was li she was living in a bad situation, or what, what is this some kind of like anti abortion thing? I don't know. According to the NBA mo mother, Sonia Curry reveals she terminated a pregnancy in her new book. Oh, she wait. She did terminate. Am I missing something here? In a podcast interview with Jamel Hill. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Why would you go on her podcast? I like Jamel Hill, though. Uh, she discussed in her new memoir. Oh, that's why she's going around on the podcast circuit. Uh, and the teachable moments from her life she has shared with her kids. In the book, she revealed that she had an abortion prior to having her three children and also contemplated another. I mean, at a certain... I, 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 I really do think that there is a bit of a... There is a bit of a bias, I mean, against women that... Women are ashamed to have to admit that they, that they had an abortion, Right. Well, that's the whole big issue we're having now. Even if, even if you do, I mean, people, again, I, I hate to bring politics into this, but again, politics seems to have found it. But I, I really do feel like people are thinking that, you know, when, you know, young women get an abortion, uh, it's like, oh, it, it, it's like, you know, just putting a band, uh, getting rid of an infection or, or putting a band in on. It's like, like I'm deliberately killing a baby so I can get back to, I, I don't know whatever 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 the hell it is doing heroin and then 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 having sex with literally everything, but it's not that. I mean, having to abort a baby in a certain case in certain cases for a lot of people it's a painful thing, right? But it's a decision that has to be made. But it's still not a decision that is made lightly. But I'm I'm getting so many people treat it like it is like it like it's a trifle. Yeah, but I'm getting frustrated. We we talked about this last week with the whole leak of the Roe versus Wade that they're looking to get rid of the choice for women to abort. 
what happens – this goes back to the question I asked you last week, Nick, which was – so what happens if someone gets raped? What happens if someone has a pregnancy that they were not expecting? What if it's going to kill them? Yeah. What if it's an ectopic pregnancy and it could kill the, the baby won't survive or the mother won't survive? So it they, happens more often than you might think. Pregnancy is a complicated thing. Now, I know I, I know you might not th you might not think I'm an authority about it. But what with the whole having a penis and all, but still. No, but we're actually for the woman having a choice, unlike yes, some yes, people. I, um, yes, because pregnancy is a complicated thing, and it's easy. Again, first of all, even putting aside my own personal feelings about it, it's not the government's business. Well, right, it's, it's not the government's business to tell. What if they? What if they had to tell every every man? Oh, uh, you you can't get a vasectomy anymore. It's like what? Fucking why not? I mean, they don't tell. They don't tell us what to do with our balls. Well, you know what? You know what's? It's kind of funny, but it's not. Do you remember um, Antonio Cromartie? Yeah, he was the one that had like ten kids, and mm -hmm. and he got a vasectomy. And and you know what? A vasectomy. And, and no, but do you know what happened? Um, I think I think he it reversed somehow. He got a woman pregnant after having a vasectomy. Oh. Well, it turns out it wasn't as effective as you might think. No, but is it true, though, I read that you actually have to, after a certain amount of years, you actually have to go in and get it, like, updated or fixed? Or I mean, I don't know if it's like updating software. No, 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 no. I'm not updating. I used the wrong you're, going, you're, going into the, you're going into the shop for an oil change. Well, if you think about it, figuratively. All right, it all right how much can 20 bucks get me? <laughs> right, uh, we got a pair of scissors and we got, ooh, a dull wine opener. <laughs> no, but I, I thought I read that you actually. <laughs> this is the pushy thingy and this is the pulley lifty thingy. And this is the pushy pulley spinny lifty thingy. What is that from? I can't remember. Fairly odd parents. Oh, that's right. That was when he's in the dentist. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, not the dentist. He, when the dog is getting fixed. That's yeah, what I yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's bad. If you if, if you don't um, if you're a kid of today, you're not going to understand any of this whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, because we're, we're we're just we're just howling into the mic here. But again, it's it was Sonya Curry's choice. She did what she had to do. But I think people I are really... taking. Wait a minute. I think people are partially taking this story out of context. Because they're making it sound like they almost were aborting staff, which is not the case. They're talking about kid, uh, an abortion before, and possibly it could have been. So again, <coughs> excuse me, Nick, I think we need to p classify this story as a headline overreaching. It's a headline. It's a bad headline, is what it is. Clickbait. Again, because the, the the person who writes the story does not do the headline. I'm looking to see if there's an author. Oh, there is an author on here for a change. Yep, there's a there again. There is usually an author, right? but the, again, they have zero say as to what the headline is going to be. Right, but <laughs> and I'm tired of this, and maybe you can explain this to me. I'm tired of clickbait headlines. Again, but they do that to maximize SEO. And even if they hate clicking, they're clicking nonetheless. No, but you know what's funny, though? And I was explaining this to you, and I was explaining it to some other people. <laughs> on, on Twitter, they now have rules that you can't put trending hashtags just for the sake of it on a, on a story that doesn't connect to it. Exactly. You can actually get... Uh, yeah, it's cloud farming. You can't do that. You can actually get suspended from Twitter if you purposely put trending hashtags on something. So you really can't. Uh, again, it's, how is this any uh, different? How is this any different? This is the this is the thing that we this is the thing that I'm talking about. Where social media has warped our perception of everything. No, where I. They, but at the same time, if we learned how to use, and this is going to be a big if, and if we ever figured this out, then we might as well you and I solve world hunger when I make this next statement if we could figure out how to use social media and the internet safely then we wouldn't have to go through all this bull crap you know what i mean there's no way to do this safely and by the way 
it, the headline is controlling this narrative, not the story itself. Yeah, the head the headline does the headline again suggests an entirely different story than than the text of the story does. I mean, I'm going to put you on the spot here because I think you can actually answer this. What do you think the headline for this story should be? Um, Stephen Curry's mom said considered um had uh had abortions before Steph was born. See, that makes more sense to me, but people are not yeah. going to read that, right? People are not going to read that. So, again, what are you trying to do? You're handicapping the all, and, and you're put and you're putting undue, you're 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 directing fire toward towards the uh towards the um the author of the piece because again, if there are pro lifers, you know, going after the going after you know, they swarm this story and they and they go after the after the the writer. That's not fair. Yeah, but the problem is who gets blamed for a story most of the time. The it's usually the writer, right? And that's the problem. And you've dealt with that, I'm sure, quite a few times when you wrote for certain. Oh things. yeah. And I'm sure your answer is, well, I didn't pick the headline. I didn't do this. I didn't pick the headline. If you got a problem, you go to them, not to me. But that's not how it works, unfortunately. Like, that's not how it works. Again. I mean, when I was in radio. Your, and Your name is on it, so therefore you take the you take the heat. I say this many times. When I produced Rudy Giuliani's show for WABC when I was there, people would call in. Of course, that was the worst part of my job because I have to sucker out all the dumb people that would call in. And they would call up and say, why the hell did you give him that story? Or why the hell did you? I said, listen, I just produced the show. I don't choose the content. I don't pick the stories. He does what he wants. Well, you're the you're the producer. It's your fault. And I'm like, it's the same thing. Like they think because I was in charge and I was a producer of the show that I chose everything that goes on the air. I don't do that. It's not my job. I understand. Again, they weren't paying you enough to care. So it is what it is. I, I think this is just more a clickbait story. Again, Yahoo has a tendency to clickbait stories where this story is can't uh, come from. All right. Speaking of awkward, Nick and I were talking about this before we came on here to do the show. Jesse Williams nude video leaked. So this one's a fun one. And he ripped the person who leaked it. In the so the so when I first heard of this story, I was thinking to myself, okay, how many dick jokes can I get away with? <laughs> at which point I said to myself, you know what? It's not it's not really appropriate at this point. However, I, hey. I will say, I mean, yeah. Sometimes you just gotta dance naked. <laughs> I mean, I've never had the urge. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> um, what is the name of that? Um, I am obviously not built for such things. What is that? What is that dance that people do with the broom and the thing? I forgot the name of the dance. Like the broom. No, but what's it called? Um, when people are are at home and they do that dance around the kitchen. What was the name of that song? The 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 rock and roll. Oh, what? Oh, uh, uh, old time rock and roll by uh, Bob Seger. That's what this makes me think of. Like, yeah, but was he naked or was he in his underwear? Because Tom Cruise was in his underwear. No, I'm aware, but I'm just saying that's what it made me think of. Like that he was just like dancing around to old time rock and roll. Like, <laughs> I mean. Uh, again, this everybody always, everybody always, you know, when nude photos of, of of naked, you know, women celebrities get leaked, everybody always, everybody always says yeah, and that out outrage is absolutely valid because remember a couple of years ago when the the iCloud accounts got hacked? Oh, that was the, the women, the, the women with the nude photos. Yeah, yeah, yes, the, the those 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 cl those classy sons of bitches called it the fappening because. Of course, we're dealing with those kinds of people. Um, and the, you know, there was a lot of this justified outrage, but you know what? It does swing a it does swing a bunch of it, it does swing other ways, you know. He was entourage, right? I think so. I think so. He, yeah. He's a guy I know entirely through other people tweeting about him. No, but he he's was nothing else. So I think, I think he plays turtle on entourage, if I'm not mistaken. No, uh, I don't I don't think so. Hang on. Uh, but I was going to make a horrible joke and say, I guess his entourage to, was uh, leaking stuff on him. But 
<laughs> see. I could have sworn. No, he was on Grey's Anatomy. But I thought he also was on Entourage. That's where I know him from. He did the motion capture for a video game everybody made fun of. Right. Yeah, I, he's more yeah, he's more of a theater actor though. He's a Broadway actor, I think, also. But that, yeah. that, that's because he wrote in the uh or or the headline again from TMZ Broadway theater rips video leaker, gross and unacceptable. I mean it, it I mean it is sexual harassment. I mean it is it is. I mean well, first of all, it is uh let me let me just because I'm pulling up the story here because I'm gonna make sure. Apparently, it was a it was a recording of a stage play in which he did a nude scene. So, could someone explain to me why people do nude scenes on a Broadway theater stage? I don't. I mean, a, a move. First of all, I first of all, I I wouldn't be I wouldn't be able to do it if I was. It's too awkward if I was um if I was directing a movie, but. Honestly, to be naked in front of what, like, uh, we're talking 1500, Broadway, fifteen hundred people in a New York theater every night. It's every probably, night, it's probably more than that. You feel like a stripper. No kidding, and that's and so someone obviously snatched a photo of him. It's being, it's like being naked in Yankee Stadium. That no, that's like fifty thousand cumulatively. But I. If, I get it. Someone shouldn't have snapped a picture or a video of him, but I feel like you're kind of asking for it partially when you do nude scenes that someone's going to snap a video of you again, but they don't, they don't allow phones. So no, I get that, but you kind of have to realize someone so, today. People are smart enough to sneak their phones in. I'm not saying you should, but you don't think someone's going to sneak their phone in and do that. Uh, maybe I just have too much faith in people. It says, despite the theater requiring spectators to place phones and smart devices in sealed cases before the show. I mean, don't they have one of those collector bins outside? I don't know. But it says, second stage says, posting the video on the web is gross and unacceptable violation of trust between the actor and audience. And the theater says it's trying to get the footage scrubbed from the net. Good luck with that! I mean, good luck with that. What we know, what happens once something hits the internet? It's forever. I mean, there's very rare things that you can get scrubbed from the internet. If you have a legal team and billions of dollars, you can get something scrubbed from the internet, but it's not happening. Oh, God. It's, uh, uh, that's why you got to be very careful when you do a nude scene or something, a sex scene, something. Again, but it is uh, again just because it happened to a, a guy doesn't mean it's not sexual harassment. I agree with you, and I'm not I'm not disputing that premise. But I feel like at the same time, you have to be careful when you do these type of scenes that everything is leakable. <laughs> I'm not saying that he ha he doesn't have a case. He definitely has a case. Oh, he definitely has a case. But you know what? There is only one way to fix this problem. What? <laughs> Make them to, to make sure they can't sneak in any, sneak in any cell phones. Well, then you're gonna become then you're gonna become a stop and frisk. Is that what you're gonna become? Again, they but they can stop people from shoplifting, but they can't stop them from uh, from uh, sneaking in a phone in a place they're not supposed to. I agree with you. I'm not disagreeing with anything you're saying, but now you're gonna have to frisk people for their phones. Unless you're gonna be like in one of those old timey cartoons where every time somebody was naked they had a barrel over their shoulders, right? Or they just do the whole blurring out, or, or they just do the whole censored sign or a fig leaf or something. I'll never forget. I did an interview. I can't remember her name now, but you did an interview naked? No, <laughs> but just because I wasn't wearing pants doesn't mean. <laughs> well, no one can see below our our waists at this point, but yeah. <laughs> but. No, get, get that image out of your head if you're listening or watching right now. I promise you I'm wearing pants. It's okay. Me too. No one wants to see that anyway. Um, but I interviewed the host of uh, Naked Dating, which was on VH1. Was it Dating Naked or Naked oh. Dating? Oh, was it? Uh, it might have been Dating Naked. I'm looking it up now. I interviewed her twice. <clears throat> 
and I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it was uh, Dating Naked. And oh, Amy Paffrath was her name. She's on uh, one of the big Hollywood <clears throat> uh, gossip shows. I can't remember which one now. But there was an incident on that show, speaking of blurring, because they couldn't blur out a woman's backside, if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, boy. And the woman, I think, sued for pixelation issues, saying it wasn't covered enough. Imagine that. It wasn't pixelated enough. I mean, some people just have more comfortable with it, but are more comfortable with it, but I just I just don't see it. And all I can say about that is if you're dumb enough to do a show like that, not her, she's the host. She didn't have to do anything. It's the contestants. You're dumb enough to do a show where you have to worry if you're pixelated enough out so people don't see you. <laughs> That's on you. I'm just saying. All right, uh, moving on. All right, it's now time for the piss Nick off part of the program. Oh, God. Elon Musk has revealed, quote, I'll reverse Trump's Twitter ban if the deal goes through. I like how, I like how, I like how you put it all in caps as if he was going to, as if he was, as if he's shouting, and shouting into the void. I'll reverse Trump's Twitter ban. No, actually, that's, that's the way the headline was written. No, it's actually appropriate written that way. Don't change it. I'm not changing it. In fact, <laughs> make everything called caps. <laughs> but, I mean, we don't even need to look at the headline for this. You and I have opinions on this without even having to look don't at a don't story. Let that, don't let him back. Well, Please, it's going to instantly make everything worse. Well, here's the thing. He's already said I'm not coming back. He's a, he's a, he's already got his app True Social, which is basically basically a way for the RNC to collect data on uh, every one of its users. Oh, by the way, I was going to say, isn't that ironic that his social media app is called Truth Social? Yep. That's like uh, what's his name? Uh, it's who had fire department for Flamesville County? <laughs> wow, that's a good one, actually. That's like, or that's like the Big Short. Drunks for sobriety. Like we could do this all day. This could be a show. Just coming up with. I mean that. I mean what? <laughs> I guess. <sighs> I, you could say stupidly brilliant. No, I, I can't. I, it is stupidly. It's brilliant in its stupidity. In its sheer brazen stupidity. I mean, it, it's usually some people try to hide it, try to hide the fact that hey, maybe this sounds a little dumb. So. You know what? Let's wink at it a little bit. Let's do a little wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Nope, nope. Proud idiocy. Proud idiocy. As if you are, as if you walk out, you walk out into the morning sun, naked as the day you were born, and say, "Behold." <laughs> I was gonna say, are you are you new here with what Elon Musk tries to do on social media? Because he's not a he's a he's the world's first billionaire shit poster. No, he's not. He is. No, he's not. He's the world's first billionaire shit poster. On Twitter? No. Do you, do you he says this shit just to get just to get people riled up. The only reason he said this was because they were doing a Tesla recall a couple of days ago. Well, you know he sold what like 5 I forgot what it was, 5 million or 8 million of Tesla stock to have the money on top of it to pay for Twitter. Yeah, and it's all hypothetical. And you know what? It's not like Twitter is 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 that much. It is is some kind of what some kind of you know wonderful safe space for people. No, and I mean, and I mean that unironically. It actually, it, uh, as in an actual safe place for people to talk. No, it's terrible. I mean, we could go back a ways, like but when we first jump back on it would make it worse. But that's like going back to like when Facebook and uh, if you really, since we're talking about old and dated technology, when MySpace was a thing, and you had the and you had the Predator Network, as it was called, because you couldn't go on MySpace. Uh, does MySpace even exist anymore? Yes, it does. It does. Didn't someone buy it? Um, I don't know. I'm looking that up now because I didn't even know. Like someone told me, it still exists. 
Uh, let's see. Oh my God. Rupert Murdoch bought MySpace? What? I mean, I don't know what the hell for, but. Oh, God. Oh, he bought it in 2009, and then it was bought by a technology holding company for $35 million from News Corp. <sighs> Who wants MySpace anymore? I, I, I mean, are you trying to drag everybody back to 2005? I mean, you want more predators out in the world? Then buy MySpace. Go ahead, go on MySpace. Remember when we weren't allowed to be on Facebook? What when our parents said to us, "Don't go on Facebook; it's dangerous." No, that we literally couldn't join Facebook because it was it was for college people only. Oh, that's when it was called the Facebook. Exactly. Yeah, does anyone remember when the was a thing in Facebook? Oh, welcome to the Facebook. Nope. It was a Harvard network. If people don't remember yes, that. It was, yes, it was a Harvard network. Well, it makes sense because that's where everything brilliant was invented back in the day. Uh, all right. We need to we need to move on before we start waxing nostalgic about Werther's originals. <laughs> we, sound, we sound like 95 year old men. But speaking of creepy people that somehow get a, a pass, Mario Batali. Now, for most people who haven't heard the name Mario Batali in what seems like decades if you if you were an avid watcher of the food network back in the day but uh as i was or if you watched if you watched the chew a lot for a couple of years on abc mario batali was fucking everywhere he was he was probably like he was the guy fieri of back then he was the guy fieri same flamboyant attitude and but he just he just took the he just took that weird he just took that Weird and just cranked it up to pervert levels. Well, so he was the Italian version of Guy Fieri. Even though and, Guy Fieri is kind of, is and half Italian. What half I Italian? He, right. Yeah, he's he the, yeah, he's he, Italian. He's overweight. He had the ponytail. He was one of those type of guys. Box. Right, and like he was, I, I can't deny it. He was a great cook, he and great, he, he was a great cook. But again, just because he was a, acquitted of sexual misconduct. Doesn't mean he didn't actually do it. Well, I'm looking at the story because there were other people that accused him of, of wrongdoing. Well, now they're filing civil suits against him, but and now, they, and now they're filing civil suits up the ass. Well, what's weird about this, and maybe you understand how law works a little better than I do, the judge made the decision, not the jury. Yeah, is that a thing? I, 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 I guess so. See, you made a mistake saying that I knew more about law than you do. I don't. Well, you kind of do. You know a little bit more than I do. But I just found it weird that the judge was the one who made the decision, not not a jury of his peers. Which is a dumb idea anyway. Which I don't. So according to the judge found Batali not guilty of both charges against him, ruling prosecutors could not prove beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, I hate that phrase because I feel like it's such a dumb phrase in the court of law. What do you mean you couldn't prove it beyond a reasonable doubt? Which means, you know, if there what if there is no if there is a credible doubt, then right, you but, have then you have to acquit him. Yeah, but isn't it true it within that phrasing that technically there could be some guilt in it? Mm. Eh. I mean, prove it to say you couldn't prove it beyond a reasonable doubt just means that you could you didn't have the evidence. It doesn't mean it didn't happen. Right? No, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, no, you're right. So that's why I feel like that phrase is backwards in, in the court of law, because all you're proving is that there was not enough evidence. It doesn't mean that he didn't do it. So oh, so he didn't do it. Or, or, or we didn't have the evidence to prove that he couldn't do it. All right, he's not guilty. <sighs> it's one of those dumb phrases where it's like, all right, well, we I guess we didn't do enough work, so he's not guilty. I guess it really does. It really doesn't matter at this point. So it's just well, you know what? He's gonna come. He's gonna come back because again, this country hates women. Because so he's gonna come back and say they tried to cancel me, but I'm back. You think that? Uh, well, you don't think even Food Network admitted, to, even though he admitted to being a pervert. You don't think Food Network would take him back, do you? 
don't know. I mean, once a, in this world of media, if you get acquitted, I mean, I mean it's, a, it's it's the it's the cycle of a it, it's the life cycle of a media figure. Now, you get famous doing one thing, and then you, you do something stupid. You do something stupid. You suffer consequences for doing something stupid, or you go to jail. You claim that you were unfairly treated, and then you end up as a correspondent on Fox News talking about cancel culture. That's a good point. I was going to say either you go to jail. So really, I wouldn't be surprised if Fox Nation picked them up to do a cooking show. Oh, God. I, I can't stand that platform. We saw CNN Plus go down due to negligence and stupidity that couldn't be supported. I could see Fox Nation going down right below it. It says nothing to do with politics. The Plus platforms don't work. They don't work. It's just I, I'm so tired of this. I, I mean, again, even though he got acquitted, like it's all in our heads. Like it's what's that phrase when like something admitted, is, admitted to doing these things though. But why would he admit it if he then got acquitted? That it, it was a it was a, uh, uh, a couple of different cases. So just because you you admitted doing it to these people and you didn't do it to these people, doesn't they don't cancel each other out? And what are the odds that a civil suit like because he's was considered not guilty? A civil suit's not going to do anything, right? No. Is that? I mean, I mean, it'll hurt him financially, but that's pretty much it. Is that is that basically like the appeals process, essentially, in a sense, like going after him civilly? Uh, again, I'm not really the person to ask. No, no, but I'm saying that's kind of like the after effect. Well, I didn't win the case, so I'm still going to go after you because I didn't get the result I wanted. <laughs> that's what the, but that's kind of what civil surface is. Uh, civil civil lawsuits are. I guess, but all right, let's move on from from food <laughs> to coffee. So James Cromwell glues himself to a New York City Starbucks counter in milk protest. Now, when you brought this story to my attention, I said, "What the fuck is going on?" So for those of you who don't know who James Cromwell is, he is a celebrated character actor. For, he was in oh, pretty much everything. But kids of a certain age, well, people who grew up during the 90s, know him as the guy that was in Babe. I, I he, he, was, he was an iRobot. He was Succession. also in... Huh? Succession. He was, he's in Succession. And I did not know that he's a crazy animal rights activist. Peter guy. So he is protesting the fact that um, milk. Starbucks is charging more for non-dairy milk. So what he so your oat milks and your nut milks and your, you know, all you know a whole, a whole bunch of other stuff. Almond milk. Yeah. Almond milk and 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 anything and, uh, anything that's basically not your traditional dairy. Anything that doesn't come from cows that is technically called milk. So he decides to go with a friend of his and super glue his hand or or his arm to the counter of his local Starbucks. Which, you know what? It may not be fair that, that Starbucks is charging more for plant-based milk options. But is that seriously the best way to, to get your message across? And now your skin's going to come off your hand. And now your skin's going to come off. Your, again, this is bright white privilege in action. Unless oh, wait, if he was any other, if he was any, if he was not famous and not a white guy, believe me, he'd be spending the night in a jail cell. But I, I'm reading the quotes here, and it says, there, "quote There's no reason for it uh, except greed." Uh, Cromwell told customers. Will you stop charging more for vegan milk? When will you stop raking in huge profits while customers, animals, and environment suffer? Which, you know, you can not go to Starbucks or, you know what, you can lead a protest. How about just don't buy from them if you don't want their service? You could not buy from them. You could lead a protest. You could, you could, you could, uh, you could, or you could organize something. You but this... You're just fucking up everybody's day. And it's not even that. They're going to catch shit for it. But wait a minute. It's not even just that. You're giving, <clears throat> you're giving attention to Starbucks. Yeah, you're giving them publicity. They look like the sensible ones. So super gluing your hand 
to a Starbucks counter. I'm going to, it's, it's like, I'm going to protest the increasing, the, <laughs> I'm going to protest the increasing prices of baby diapers by shitting myself in public. <laughs> Damn. If I was doing that as a protest, who do you think looks like the idiot? I'm, I'm just, just asking, who do you think comes out looking like the dope? By the way, I just want to make it clear. If he thinks he has a major following, he's got 20,000 followers on Twitter. Again, the man's been acting for about uh, uh, 40, almost almost 50 years. So really, I wouldn't really expect him to. He's always he's always been he's a very talented actor, but he's always been a that guy as in like it's hey, that guy, it's that guy. I know him. A character actor. I know. I, I, you know like, what? You didn't answer my question before. What? If I go into the middle of a mall to protest the rising costs of Pampers and I shit myself to make that point. What about it? That's not a question. That's a shame. Who looks like the idiot? Oh, you do. Exactly. Ding, 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 ding. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) that's like, and I've told this story a couple episodes ago, or actually, was it last episode you weren't here? Uh, That with the guys from the Big Bad Broadcast. Oh uh, yeah, that that was the episode before. Oh, two episodes ago, that I was on my campus at Nassau Community College. This was my first two years at college, and with these PETA protesters were on our campus. And the one class that I had to go to, I had to use the uh, you know on most campuses they have the tubes so you can go under under. Yep, I've so been be- using the, I I use those tubes a lot, and they're blocking. The, the the campus is the campus. If you don't know, NASA Community College has all the all, the campus has all the charm of a Soviet gulag. So right, and so of course these protesters are blocking the one way to get down. I was telling the guys the one way to get to where the class is that I had to get to, and they're out there with their posters spewing their nonsense. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for animals being protected, but don't do it on a college campus. Please, or at least do it at a part of campus where there's enough space. Don't block my one tube area that I have to walk down to get to my class. There's no other way to get there. Oh, God. And, and, and I'm and they're, they're they're shoving posters in my face, and like I was so close to like like wanting to like suplex somebody, like because I was so annoyed. I'm yeah. like yeah, I'm like. I was like, get the fuck out of my way. Which I really don't trust PETA anyway, because they kill they kill pit bulls. Right. And and they were you want to know what they were complaining about? They were complaining about chickens and their eggs. Again, there are much better ways to do that. You, you know what? There and, are much better ways to make their but than fucking up everybody everybody's day than you look like the idiot. I mean Craig Mitchell, who's one of the guys from Big Bad Broadcast, who was on, he made a, a funny joke. I, I don't want to misinterpret it completely, but he's like, we should just invite them all out for omelets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know what? That's a good idea. <laughs> Ooh, and for dinner, who wants some carbonara? <laughs> you know what? You know, and while we're at it, why don't we make some bacon? <laughs> <sighs> Moving but, on. All right, I saved the best story for last, Nick. And you, you, you know how you and I are full of hot air most of the time. Well, it usually comes at this end. So. Usually comes at this end. But soccer star Marcelo demoted from his soccer club for ripping ass. So farting really loud for those of you who don't know, aren't familiar with the colloquialism ripping ass. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, you're in trouble. I mean... So enlighten me about this. Was he farting too much? <laughs> I can't stop laughing at this. Um, Brazilian soccer star Marcel lost his first team spot with the French club Lion. I'm sure I'm mis- I'm botching all of these for raising a stink, literally, <laughs> with reports claiming that the defenders cont- <laughs> continuous farting and laughing in the locker room. Led to his demotion last year. I mean, <laughs> farts are farts are hol- objectively hilarious. It doesn't matter who you are. You could be six years old. You could be sixty years old. Everybody farts and everybody laughs at it. It says the thirty-four-year-old again. My, again, my my niece, seven months old, 
farts at the exact. They they laugh at the ex- She laughs at the exact same thing that a thirty five year old father laughs at. Right. Farts are hilarious. So wait. So the thirty four year old who now plays for Bordeaux was reportedly initially bumped down to Lions reserve squad back in August for laughing during teammate Leo Dubois speech to boost morale after a bad loss to angers, which the club called inappropriate behavior. So he wasn't laughing at the farts. He was laughing at somebody else. As it turns out, there was a lot more gas behind the decision. Okay. TMZ has got to stop with the, with the bad puns. I, I who, thought, who do they think they are? You? Yeah. Do they think they're me? <laughs> It says, with ESPN claiming Marcelo was punished for incessantly pooting in the dressing room. <laughs> and, well, laughing, just got a tooth. <laughs> and laughing while around team manager Peter Boas and director Genio. I'm sure I'm pronouncing all these names wrong. Marcelo went on to make 11 appearances for Lyon, uh, scoring three goals. I think it's pronounced Leon. Leon. Leon and Marcelo eventually farted or parted ways in January. Did when you the, actually make that mistake or is that how it's written? No, they wrote TMZ wrote farted and then put a line through it and then put parted <laughs> ways, ways in January. When the club terminated his contract, two days later, he joined Bordeaux. Uh, no word on if the same uh, problem has continued with the new club. Okay, so first of all, that that is gonna be a bitch to prove in a court of law. <laughs> <laughs> Second I, of all, the writer must have loved writing that story. I getting mean, wait, getting paid to write about flatulence? Yeah, getting paid to write about people farting? Where do I sign up? You you would do that every day if you could. I do it now. I mean that's what do you think, what do you think I'm doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I'm on this show? I mean, you think, like, actually, you think it's actually to talk about current events or to talk about it with you, or am I just biding my time until we can actually talk about farts? No, this is the moment. <laughs> this is the moment that I joined for. I mean, and I can't wait till we have interns because the I our intern, which is going to be starting with us in a week, she's actually really hilarious and has a sense of humor, so she's going to fit right in with this show. By the way, um. Which, she's, by the way, I do have a, I do have a good, I do have a good title for another show. We call it "Blowing Ass," and we just, <laughs> we just break, oh, you know, we just break parts. God, <laughs> you know what? That's a podcast I would listen to. Would you? That's the, that's the podcast America needs right now. Can we just get like? Can we just take celebrities and make them have flatulence? Now that would be hilarious. I mean, maybe you could, maybe you could, I usually don't like Kim Kardashian, but if she's farting in a crowded elevator. The problem is her ass is so big, it would probably last for a day. <laughs> you sound like a cannon. What? You sound like a cannon. Oh, I thought you were going to say Nick Cannon. <laughs> no, it sounds like a cannon. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, right, I, right, what did right, I tell right. you? What did I tell you, Nick? I saved this for last because I knew we were going to go off on a tangent on this one alone. Yes, yes. So that will do it for this. Well, week's. Yeah, make sure you uh, follow us on social media. I'll give you just where you can find us uh, at Beyond the Bench One on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Beyond the Bench One, Instagram as well, uh, Beyond the Bench One. And make you sure you follow, follow me on Twitter at Nick Wright's Words. You can follow him at N Morgison Radio. And make sure that you check out our sponsor for today's episode, knackbags.com. Make sure when you go to get your knack bag, you enter the offer code BEYOND in your checkout to get a free TSA approved locker, a lock, a $15 value, absolutely free. Why aren't you doing it right now? Seriously, stop farting and get, get on it. Why? Because what kind of life is it? It's a one-bag life. Exactly. And we're not full of hot air either when we give you this offer. So, that's going to do it for this this edition of Beyond the Bench. For Nick Morgison, I'm Nick Federa. Good night, everybody. See you back on the bench. We'll see you next week for episode 30! 30! 30! 30 episodes of this crap! No pun intended!
<laughs> yeah, we're just gonna open up open up with a trumpet line. It just sounds like farts. <laughs> Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>